So, um, put your hands up. I mean, this is kind of the, the, the kind of the thing we have to do at any conference, right? It's like uh, hands up to count how many people, but in this case, it's serious. Uh, who here has an API? Keep your hand up, right? Uh, is it a hands? Keep it up if it's public. Uh, keep it up if I can sign up to it uh, for free and tr play with it. Yeah, and keep keep it up if you have signed up to your own API in the last three months. Oh wow, there's quite a few of you. That's this is this is good. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Cristiano. I'm a developer experience architect uh, at Box. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Box because I've only been there for like two and a bit months. Uh, if you want my card, I can give you my card, and then in three months we can chat when, once I know what I'm doing. Uh, I used to work at Hoopy, uh, like I said, now at Box. Uh, we did this bit already. Um, I do this thing on, on my website where I just kind of like look at the onboarding of, of websites because I noticed like... Um, uh, I, I used to work at PayPal before, and I and I realized like I'd worked there for three years, and I think the last time I signed up for a new account, for a new developer account, had been like two years earlier or something like that. And a lot changes. So we all design these like amazing experiences, and then things change, and things change, and things change, and you just don't know what it looks like anymore. Uh, so I've looked at different companies. I've looked at uh, GitHub. I've looked at um, a whole bunch of different companies. I think I said Stripe was pretty good, you know, almost flawless. I live in the UK, so I have like, I don't have like the capacity to say awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> almost flawless. Uh, I think uh, GitHub, I said harder than it should be. Uh, they were very happy with that. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to do something naughty. This is not a presentation. Uh, this is about as far as these slides are going to go. Uh, this is an API experience review. So we're going to just look at one of your APIs and see how it works in Onboard. Because a lot of you have been uh, boasting about how great your documentation is. I'm looking at VMware over here. Uh, so I have a... <laughs> so I have a hat here. So what I need is uh, I need an assistant. So who wants to help? Come on, you want to help? So I have a hat. Uh, I have I have I have two APIs here that I could uh, that I've randomly selected that I could fall back onto. But I really would love for one of you or two of you maybe to put your name for your company on here, and then we're going to see how easy it is to onboard. You're, so you're promising to be nice, right? I'm I'm promising to be nice. So while while what's your name? Zolin. Zolin. Yeah. So big round of applause for Zolin. <laughs> All right. So put your hand up if you want to put your name in the hat. Come on. Oh, we got a few. So so go to the back there. Come on, we got to add at least one more. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's one in the back there as well. So keep in mind, this needs to be easy for me to get started with. Uh, it shouldn't require like a five gig download, because uh, we might be kind of getting a bit in the wrong direction with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and onboard, and I'm going to look at things like cognitive load. How easy is it for me to get started? And easy is kind of a very subjective term. So I like to look at certain kind of things. A cognitive load is one of them. And it's kind of the idea that um, when somebody gives you a task, there's kind of a sort of, uh, just like when, we, when somebody goes, oh, go run 5K, you know, there is a physical load to that. <laughs> uh, to a lot of the activities that we do when we try to onboard, it's, it's, the, the, it's a task where we have to kind of perform a cognitive load to learn something new. And how easy does that documentation make that to perform that load? Um, often that comes in place with like too much documentation, uh, too little documentation, too much information, uh, those kind of things. Um, I'll also be looking at um, the idea of a mental model. We, got into that a little bit earlier already where people were kind of focusing on kind of the idea that you need to introduce industry concepts. We want to know what what is happening in your industry. Uh, I might not be familiar with everything about your industry and therefore if you're going to throw a lot of jargon at me, I might not actually know what your product does. So what I'd recommend you normally do is, I've, we've heard this before already, is like get, get your interns, get your new employees to start, you know, to, to maybe write a friction log. Uh, about your product. So the way you would write a friction log is, um, just to give you an idea, you basically have them sign up to, the, to your product and write down where the, the kind of the moments of pleasure are, the moments of frustration, the moments of pain. Uh, 
Now, if you if you're devoid of uh, um, interns, right? Uh, you get somebody who was uh, very much at karaoke yesterday, drank too much, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, kind of drank too much water right now and really needs to go to the toilet and therefore is not necessarily in the best state of mind uh, to kind of simulate uh, an intern who isn't necessarily that familiar with technology. So we have, we've got quite a few entries here. You are, you are brave people. Uh, <laughs> six, so we got six in here. So I'm gonna pull this out and look at this. Pipe drive, Who's, where's pipe drive? Excellent, give a big round of applause to pipe drive. I also have absolutely no idea what pipe drive is. <laughs> so we're going to see. Uh, Pipedrive.com? <laughs> Am I right? That is the company? Yeah, cool. Thank you for confirming. That was very useful. Uh, <laughs> uh, we make salespeople unstoppable. Cool. So I'm assuming you have an API? I yes, otherwise this, uh, OK. so. Uh, I, I don't see developer here in the top. Okay, so developer.pipedrive.com. Oh, oh, that worked! Wow. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to our log. So I went to uh, 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 pipedrive.com. Uh, so I had a bit of a frustration because I couldn't find uh, uh, could not find dev. Docs. Uh, then I went to uh, developer.pipedrive.com developer and I had a bit of pain because it went to straight to sign up. <laughs> okay, so what I also want you all to do, right, is if you see something nice, yeah, I want you to give a round of applause because this, per the, you know, Pipedrive is, is, has thrown themselves into this uh, at my mercy. Uh, so there should be a bit of a reward for that, okay? So I do think this looks very nice, right? Looks nice and water. OK, so this is not what I wanted to do. How do I find your dev docs? There we go, API. Developers.pipedrive.com. It's always good to have them both kind of go to your dev docs, I find. Cool. So uh, one of my first steps that I always like to look at is like, what does this do? Uh, what can I do with this? We, I think um, Joyce talked about it a little bit, kind of the idea of like being able to explore what a product does, to try it. It's useful not just for the, the business people, but it's also useful for kind of the, the developers to, to see a correlation between, hey, this really powerful thing is these three lines of code, so it's quite easy to do. Now, I can add my API token. I don't have one yet. Uh, what do you do? Uh, what does it do? So this is, for me, this is very much like a reference documentation, which is great if I already knew what I was trying to do at this point. Uh, I don't yet. So documentation, do we have something else? Ooh, there we go, readme.io. Um, OK, so what is it? It's a CRM or not. So it's a sales CRM. OK, so it's hard for me to understand what I can do from this. Uh, I can look at this. I, can, I think the best thing I can probably do is look at just the different API endpoints to kind of get a context of what your product does. Uh, this is good. They explain authorization. Well, explain authorization is probably a different story. Uh, so currencies, deals, so I can kind of create deals, kind of find deals, kind of find and make notes. OK, OK, so add a note. Cool, maybe we can go and make a note. That would be maybe, maybe a good start. OK, so let's get started, right? So we've decided that it's maybe a bit hard to figure out what it is, so maybe we should just get playing. Um, let's get started. Now, I think what I find interesting is a lot of websites that will always have like a really big get started button on it. Um, I don't see one. <laughs> OK, where are we? Scroll back up, uh, all the way to the top. Where can I find my API token? Um, I think I just need to go through the front page, or not? Try it for free. There you go. OK. Uh, I'm going to do this through books, because I have that email open here. 
Okay. So when I talk to cognitive overload, uh, a lot of these questions kind of get into that, that position exactly. At this moment, um, I'm not necessarily convinced yet that your product is what I need, right? Especially because it's been hard for me to determine whether or not the product is what I need it to be. Um, so the more questions you ask me on sign up, right, the more of these questions you ask me, each of these is a certain kind of conversion rate, right? There's a certain chance that I'm going to go, you know what, I don't want to give you this. So it's kind of interesting that this is now asking me for a name, my company name, my industry, uh, and my password. If you look at companies like GitHub, uh, that first form is three fields. It's your password, your name, your email. That's it. That's what they're sticking to. They do ask you a lot more questions after that on the next page, but at that moment they've already converted you from somebody who they don't know to somebody from who they have their email, your email address. So let's go that way, Cristiano. Uh, company name, none of your biz. Uh, this is the other problem with these kind of things is um, if you ask these things when somebody hasn't decided on your product yet, you're going to inevitably end up with random data. Oh, that was nice. That, that deserves a round of applause. Come on. Yeah. So kind of taking that pain away of like uh, like a lot of these signups for them, they will have like 20 requirements, like it needs like uppercase, lowercase, number, hieroglyph, bray, right? Like all of them in there. Uh, often they're hard to discover, so to kind of like suggest the password to a user is, is a really good feature because it means that I know for sure that this is going to work. I hope. <laughs> like, uh, ooh, receive occasional sales tips. Nope. <laughs> Uh, pretty sure that's not GDPR compliant to have that auto ticked. Uh, uh, how many people in your company will use pipe drive? Cool. Uh, in my company, uh, well, my, none of your biz company is currently 50 plus. Blah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, start using pipe drive. Okay, cool. Ooh, I got a gold account. I feel good about that. I kind of like this page. I mean, it, it's taking a while, but it, at least it tells me, you know, I, I'm currently on a gold account. I've got 14 days. That's very nice because it puts that, that kind of doubt in my mind. Again, that, that, that kind of like that, that idea that I don't know uh, to what level I've activated uh, away. It's clear to me that I am activated. So how long do I still have? Till what was the end of this? 18 minutes. 18 minutes. Okay, cool. Okay, so I think, how do I find my API token? Uh, settings, personal, other API. So it's kind of annoying that I have to, like, why is there not a link to that maybe? That would have been nice uh, if you know where this is going to be. Uh, settings, other API. Everybody, copy that. <laughs> Take a screenshot. <laughs> you can get to all my data. Cool, so we found the API token. Uh, that was a bit harder than it should have been. Uh, there we go, back to this documentation. So we want to go make, uh, make, uh, make an API call to create a note, right? So we, we can you all see this? Or, oh, sorry, make it a bit bigger. Um, cool. Where was this stuff about making a note? Where did that go? Uh, I mean, I have this somewhere. Uh, API reference. There we go. Okay, cool. Add my API token. Here, save token. Okay. I feel like when you have a button that size, there should be some kind of payoff for that, right? Like, that's, <laughs> like that didn't do anything. Uh, what's the next step? I feel like often when you have a user go through sign up or, or through any process where you're trying to teach them, there's always something else to learn, right? I'm currently interested in this product and I want to know I want to learn how to use your product. I want to learn how to use this product specifically. So my motivation is actually quite high right now. Um, now, it might be that I don't want to keep learning, but the chances are that a certain percentage of your users at every step are going to want to keep learning. So when you do something, every kind of moment of interaction should be an opportunity to go, okay, cool, you've done this. The next thing you could go and look at is this thing or that thing or that thing. 
if you look at the Stripe documentation, a lot of their pages at the bottom, there will be like four or five links that will say, hey, um, next steps or next things to look at. And these might either be guides uh, on, on kind of like parallel topics, like, oh, you've created a charge, here's, a, here's one about like refunds. Or they might be links to like, oh, well, you've created a charge, here's a link to like the reference documentation to, to learn the exact in and outs about creating a charge. So kind of both going horizontal and kind of vertical in these kind of these links out. So we were gonna create a, a node, right? So let's see if we can do this. Add a node, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, is there a, mm, ooh. so I can just write something in here and then I can say test endpoint. Oh, here we go, request, it's a bit hidden. Okay, so we can just take our, our data. Uh, this is the URL, it's a bit tiny. Uh, and we just post the body to it. So I'm gonna bring up my terminal see if we can make this happen. So I think this is the URL, so make sure I copy that. Let's make this a bit bigger for you. Uh, I use this client called HTTPy, because uh, it makes doing these things a lot easier. Uh, and it means I can write JSON uh, like this. So I just do content, uh, let's do this as a string content uh, equals test. Note must be associated with at least one organization, person, or deal. Please check developers.pipedrive.com for more information. I like that. It's got a very descriptive link, right? Uh, as well as a, an actual link out to the documentation as to where to go. So. Um, I mean, it would have been nice if that actually linked to maybe the page specifically for this uh, note. Um, I'm also surprised to see this because in this case I ran this, right? And, oh, I did get the same result down here, yeah. Uh, the reason why I was surprised is because this has a, a red string with it here, like a, one of these little red stars. Uh, so I assume this is the only thing I have to have. Um, so let's see if I can read this. Uh, notes must be associated with at least one organization, person, or deal. Okay, so I guess we need to make a Organization, create an organization, create an organization. There we go. Uh, ooh. Um, add an organization, there we go. So it just needs a name, oh, yeah. and it's under slash organization. So we just go in here. Um, let's move this up here so you can all see it. Uh, slash organ. Organization, because I'm not. <laughs> uh, name equals uh, Bob's your uncle. Not found. Okay, what did I do wrong? Okay. Did I uh, go singular instead of plural? Ah, okay, yeah, I just. Um, Made a mistake in there. Cool. What does that say? Excellent. So we have a, we've created a, we've created an API call. We made an API call. We created a, a new organization. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you can see that even with kind of like bad documentation, uh, often like. To some extent, if you have the right errors, uh, that can often drive users back to the right places, to the right points. I think for me personally, what I can remember, the points where I had the most frustration in the past has been when I've like just gotten an error and I didn't know why. No idea, zero, zero just explanation as to what just happened. Um, so, um, I think the final thing to do, I'm not gonna create a note. Uh, my final thing is, uh, so, so I'll, in, in, these, in these tutorials, uh, sorry, in these breakdowns I do on, on my website, I kind of look at three things. Uh, exploration, where, how, how easy is it to kind of understand what the product does before you get started? 
Uh, then I switch often to kind of the get started guide to see where kind of where those friction points are. And then often when I've looked at these kind of like responses, I want to know, okay, cool, can I find out exactly what I've just done and what these parameters mean? Right? Can I can I find the exact description? And I think in this case we're we're pretty much already there. That is on this page. I think um, if you look at reference guides, I think Stripe is still pretty much still kind of the go-to one that people kind of refer to in most cases. Uh, and they've kind of you know designed that that three-panel design, right? The the kind of like the different actions on the left, and then in the middle, kind of like the description, the different parameters, and then often we have on the right the code samples. Um, I would say like my main problems here are there's, a, there's certain levels on kind of unpredictability again, um, and and hard, certain things are hard to discover. In this case, the organization kind of the URL, right, is is hard to discover. I can see your path. I can see that I need to post to slash organizations, but unless I either run this sample or I go and find or I go and scroll back up to the top of the page it will be really hard for me to figure out what the actual URL is. In this case, I had to actually run this and look at the request uh, sample, which we had here, right, uh, to see what the actual API endpoint is. Be explicit. Be explicit about those things. I should be able to see those things in one glance. Um, I think one thing that's really good is, um, which is sometimes missing in, in, in a lot of APIs, is uh, here we see not just kind of the name and what it needs to be, but we also see the type. The type is a really important one, right? Because if um, too many assumptions are made about certain things, I think Twitter used to have this issue when they kind of changed at some point their IDs because people had assumed that their IDs were uh, numbers, and then at some point they kind of went beyond that or they changed it. I'm not sure if that was Twitter or not or somebody else. Yeah, yeah. So like, quite often, when a, when a company kind of runs out of that range, then suddenly it becomes issues. Where um, if you just say, "Hey, this is a string from the start," then at least you're kind of covering that from the start. Um, what I have to say though is like, um, what I often miss in these things is kind of a clear link to the responses. Like you've just told me what to send, but then uh, as for the response, it's almost impossible for me to find where where the response types are. Um, I often see example responses, so in this case we see example responses. Um, often that's missing links to kind of the response definition, uh, which it is in this case. I can probably find the response definition somewhere. Mm, I'm not sure. So in this case it's missing completely, I think. So there's no definition of this response. There's no definition of what this means as far as I can see. Um, Organization, oh, here, uh, no, organization field. Okay, I don't think it's there. Um, but what I notice even more is like the ones that do have that defined, they don't have the types defined for uh, the responses. Or even worse, uh, no ranges. Okay, this is a number, cool. What's the limit of that number? Like how large can this number get? How small can it get? Uh, this is, um, uh, especially with like kind of like tree architectures, uh, if there's a relationship, what if that relationship isn't there? Will that field be null? Or will that field not be there? Very hard to kind of determine, uh, especially when you're dealing with like statically typed languages to kind of parse that kind of stuff. That's where you kind of get the unexpected runtime errors. Uh, JavaScript is very happy to just ignore stuff that isn't there. Uh, Java, not that much. So those are really important things to look at. Um, I think overall, I would say this is a uh, harder than it should be, but we managed to make uh, an API call live on stage, uh, which I think uh, a lot of APIs would struggle with. So big round of applause to Pipedrive. <laughs> so yeah, that was scary as hell for them. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please don't do this to Box yet. Uh, <laughs> I will come and do that at some point. I will show you uh, uh, when, when I think it's uh, at, a, at a better state. So thank you very much. Woo